<laughs> Mixolydian stuff. <laughs> Howdy folks, uh, we are going to work on Mixolydian uh, today. Uh, not going to go super deep theory. Uh, what I tend to tell people to do is if you want to go really deep in the theory um, and really go exhaustive to it, go check out Rick Beato. Uh, check out some of the other folks who do that kind of stuff. Uh, I, I mean, he's just, Rick Beato is amazing and I uh, love watching his stuff and I learned so much. Um, these are some things, that, you know, every video that we do is, is things that I've used over the past uh, many years I've played guitar. Um, Mixolydian is one of those things that I, I like to use over blues progressions uh, because uh, it adds a flavor that sometimes makes people turn their head and they go, what, what was that? That sounded cool because it's a kind of refreshing. So the music theory of it. Basically, what Mixolydian is, is it is a, a major scale with a flat seven. So it's got some tonalities um, that are familiar, um, and then something that kind of makes your, your head turn a little bit. So uh, there's a downloadable sheet that's going to have scale patterns and arpeggio patterns, and we're staying in A Mixolydian just to keep things easy, easy to see where I'm at um, and be able to use it all over the place. And then I have a little bonus lick that we're going to work on that, that kind of incorporates uh, a little bit of everything. But if you think about what the scale is, so in this case we're doing A mixolydian, so A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, here's the flat 7, G, A. So when you hear it, it's got that little play in it, and it's like, okay, how, do, how am I going to make this thing work? Well, it sounds great over blues stuff, and especially your your dominant chords. Uh, so whenever you hear those kind of things, your seventh chords, your uh, dominant ninth chords, um, there's things about those that just sound... You're going to get that nice... little bit of a difference in there. And so the catchy notes, the things that really jump out there... Uh, primarily are that major third. So if you're playing your typical that kind of thing, if you, instead of going for, say, just like a minor pentatonic, how about you go Aha! Um, what I like to do when I'm using it is I like to m jump back and forth, mix it up with Mixolydian. How about that? Um, so, uh, here I'm gonna I'm gonna show a couple of little things and I'm gonna do some cuts. I usually don't do cuts in our videos. It's usually kind of once through, um, but I want to do some cuts because I want to do some things that are blocking out exactly what we're learning here. So this is gonna be fun. Apply it. Have a blast with it. Thanks. All right. So. Let's, I went over the scale a little bit, but I'm going to show you the whole thing just so you've got an easy view of it. So we started off with the scale on the sheet, and um, I even, you can include the seventh over here as G, but I'll, I'll do it just like I have it written out. So starting on A with my second finger. And that's basically what we're going to work on. cool. So with that, again, kind of having that idea of playing over, say, a blues progression, most of the time whenever I'm playing over things like that, I don't, I don't stick to one particular scale. I will do a little bit of your, your minor pentatonics. I may even throw some major pentatonics in there, um, and then the Mixolydian, and maybe even a little Dorian stuff. Um, the, the first thing I always think about is um, 
something that sounds like this. This this is going to sound kind of BB King ish. Um, it's just kind of a happy little sound, kind of change up that I, I think sounds just so cool and so refreshing instead of just the kind of pentatonic minor thing. Yeah. I mean, it's cool. It has its place, and I don't want to downplay that. But but when you get a chance to hear something like that, that is cool. That's it, just really kind of a nice thing, and that's me changing back and forth on that. All right. So the arpeggio breaks down like this. We're doing a typical kind of one three five, but we're going to add in the flat seven, which makes it... Uh, you know, kind of catch that catch note. The the seventh and the and the third are the things that are so important in this. So one, three, five, flat seven, and then we're going to start up again with one, three, five, seven, one, three. And something that sounds really really cool on this is being able to take that fourth that we have in there because and if you kind of watch some of Reap, Rick, <laughs> Reap, Rick Beato's videos, um, he talks about the things that are important in modal kind of things that really catches your ear are the things that are based on the half steps in the scale. And so the third sounds cool, obviously, um, but kind of moving back and forth from the third to the fourth. So if you get something like, ooh, pretty. Um, so think think about this. If I if I run up the ooh, very very nice, very nice. So that stuff sounds so cool. If you're playing over those dominant chords, it sounds great, great. But um, if you if you're stuck in something where somebody you know, they're just doing the kind of standard stuff, just kind of doing kind of power chording kind of thing. You can still make it sound good. Um, it may be a little harder to get those notes to work out. Um, and here is a little fancy way to kind of play through this thing, and hopefully I don't destroy it. Um, but you can go up that arpeggio and do a little repeat on that thing. Uh, you can actually even do it kind of a little more. Ooh, and that's playing off of that whole thing, bringing that fourth into it, which is... Uh, I'll call it tonally sexy. Not totally, tonally. That works. Um, so that's kind of fun. All right, here is the lick. So this is something like I was talking about. You can kind of hop back and forth between your minor, pen, minor pentatonics and your major pentatonic, and you can hop uh, to your Dorian and your Mixolydian. It all works. Uh, they're just, you got to be careful about what you're landing on, what you're staying on. Uh, but I love the sound of this. I'm going to move up just a little higher. This lick starts on the 10th fret. So I'm only moving up. I'm starting on that fourth. So starting on D. So we're doing the, the, the fourth, a minor third to the major third and jump it back in there and that's so it's got a little bit of the chromaticism the stuff that's really cool in there and if you wanted to get really fancy your blues notes only one way so really cool um and yeah that that lick sounds nice at that kind of pace or a little zippier you know something like that uh, change octaves on it too. Uh, you don't have to be thinking, oh, I'm stuck down here. Changes up fingerings a little bit. Ah. Something like that where you get that low E in there or, you know, start blending it up. Those are just really cool licks that it's like, that's crossing over and jumping around and it's got a ton of movement. But it doesn't have to be speed. It doesn't have to be, you know, crazy. Um, you know, just move it in there and have some fun with it. And like I said, add on. Something like that. Okay, our bonus, bonus lick um, is this thing where you can take the arpeggio 
that is just a straight mixolydian arpeggio and actually use it over something with more of a harmonic minor sound to it. So specifically speaking, in this case, if I'm using it over in A, um, it's really one of those things that's, it's, uh, I think it's called Lydian dominant in harmonic minor. It's one of the modes in there. And think Yngwie. Um, he, ten, the tendency is for him to play in that, in that mode a lot. Um, so if I'm playing in A, um, it really, if you, if you want to think about it different ways, it's kind of like D harmonic minor, but we're playing it over A, so it's a little different. So the notes in there, um, you're going to hear, we're going to do that little... Okay, there's our harmonic minor, or our harmonic minor, there's our mixolydian arpeggio, and I'm doing it in A, but now it's the choice of notes of how we end. So... Very cool, right? Almost. Um, so that's pretty cool stuff. That can that can be used differently to really make the the ear change on that. And I and where I I suggest you try this is try it over something that's kind of bluesy, um, and it, you're either gonna wreck it. <laughs> or it's going to sound really, really cool. I just wouldn't live there, put it that way. Um, it'll make your bandmates' uh, heads twist off, and hopefully in a cool way. Um, and if it's awful, hey, you know what? Just blame it on me. It's easy enough. <laughs> uh, so cool. Enjoy. Have fun with this. I love Mixolydian, and uh, if you need to know more about it, Rick Beato. There's a bunch of other guys that have done some things that are really cool about it. Um, and, uh, yeah, modal playing doesn't have to be for the large skulled, uh, many, many, uh, crevices in the brain. It's a matter of, it, it can really be usable and sound really beautiful over things. So have at it. Thanks.